It's gonna get warm. <laughs> I got all the drips going on. Yeah. You know, have you ever been at an extremely quiet place? Some place where it's very no noise, very calm, then suddenly hear it. Stick break. <laughs> or you've been out hunting, you know. <laughs> Hunters know this more than maybe some of the people who don't hunt. But suddenly you hear a noise and you know that noise. And sure enough, you go off on that tangent following that noise because you know that it might be a deer or, or something that you're hunting. Or have you been laying in bed, you know, and you get this elbow in the ribs, you know, and says, Honey, honey, did you hear that? And you go, yeah, you're snoring. <laughs> what do you do, wake yourself up? <laughs> My wife and I, that's about all we hear lately is each other snoring. <laughs> she snores as well as I do. <laughs> I'm beginning to think that we have a little discipleship going on. Who's the better snorer? <laughs> but a lot of times, you know, we have background noise is going on like even this morning you know when I I hear the cars going you know I I don't think of it as being oh no not not car traffic noise my my microphone's gonna be stuck with that you know it's gonna be too loud and it won't be able to pick me up <laughs> but the truth is I get a kick out of hearing it because sometimes you know I, I remember driving on the road you know and being out Oh, driving long distances. That was a blast. I had so much fun. But then there are other times where sometimes, you know, noise isn't so good. You know, like, there have been times at night where I've heard gunshots and I live in the city, so I walk down to see what was going on, you know. Sometimes somebody got shot, you know, and they died. And unfortunately, in the area I live in, and it's less so real close by, but in the county and basically in the media area, there's basically shooting every night, you know. Most of the time somebody gets killed. It might be that way in your neighborhood. That kind of noise is like a warning, you know. Be careful. And then other times, you know, you notice that as traffic begins to wind down, you know, it begins to get quieter here at my porch, you know, and I I start to hear other sounds that possibly the car noise of everybody going to work, you know, had drowned out, that I begin to hear, you know, these starlings or chickadees or some birds singing, even the pigeons cooing, and, uh, man, when I hear that, you know, I kind of, my attention is turned to it, and I think, ooh, that's cool, did you hear that, you know, and I look around and my wife's not here, she can work. <laughs> oh well. I just think to myself, you know, that's neat. You know, and so I kind of, I kind of take a moment, you know, to think about that. You know, when I'm listening to the, the birds singing or the, or the uh, pigeons cooing, and it just kind of calms me. But then I hear a, a siren go off, you know, and suddenly it's like, wow, what is that, you know, and you hear the certain kind of sirens and you know that man in a few minutes shoom, his county sheriff is flying down the road doing must be 120 it seems like it's got to be 100 miles an hour but he's flying down this road you know and you can hear the tire noise you know and i listen to that and i think man what would happen if he hit somebody you know what i mean or if he got hit by somebody i mean it'd, it'd just be all over you know and so thinking of those noises too, you know, each one I respond to differently with the information that I have, that I've processed by way of knowing, you know, what it, what it is, you know, because I've seen it and I've heard it before, you know, and then as it quiets down again, you know, I kind of take a few minutes, you know, to sit back and every once in a while, I really get calm and quiet, then I can almost hear God speak, I almost can hear His voice. Now, I have heard his voice in the past, and he's talked to me, and I'm sure he's talked to you too, you know. Sometimes he talks through a preacher, a teacher, a pastor, an elder, a deacon, whatever, apostle, who knows. Maybe he spoke to you at church, you know, the other day, and he enjoyed it, and it's kind of neat. 
But sometimes, personally, God speaks to me. You know, and I like those moments where it's really special because sometimes He does it like inside, where I, I can sense the sound of His voice. Once in a great while, very far and few in between, He spoke it to me direct. You know, that's not always good. <laughs> sometimes it's. Don't do that. <laughs> but in every way, however he's done it, I've heard his voice. And, you know, I heard that and I responded. God may be speaking to you today. There may be a lot of noises in your life that might be distracting you from hearing it, like the car traffic or maybe some friend waving, you know, and saying hi. Maybe the telephone ringing or the cell phone buzzing, or the little tick a tick or whatever you have on your <laughs> smartphone that lets you know that, hey, it's time to text again. So you get out and start texting, or maybe your tablet, if you're really getting into techie. Or maybe your computer is kind of like flashing a light at you, telling you, you know, hey, pay attention to me. <laughs> but no matter what it is, whether a smoke alarm, you know, trying to get your attention, God doesn't work that way. You know, he doesn't come in with crashing sounds, you know, and try to bombard you with his presence or to tell you, wake up, like your alarm clock. But he comes to you in a still, small, soft voice that you might miss. It might be like a fluttering of a hummingbird's wing. Ooh, that is a quiet sound. <laughs> or maybe it might be the sound that the Northern Lights makes. Wait a minute. Northern Lights mean like the Aurora Borealis? That don't make no sound. Double check. You might be surprised. Maybe it does, maybe it doesn't. I'm not going to say, because I used to live up in Alaska. I used to sit on my rooftop, you know, out. There's a garage, you know, we had a little shed on the back of the garage, and I used to sit on that slope back in, and I'd lean my back head up against the dormers, you know, the part of the garage and play my guitar and just look up and worship the Lord and sometimes the northern lights would come out and he'd worship with me too <laughs> and it was just me and him and it was wonderful but there are times where you should take the time and maybe make the time to hear something other than the sound of your own voice maybe something other than the thoughts that you have in your head maybe Take the time to have a devotional and read your Bible or listen to a tape or watch a video and hear someone else's voice as opposed to your own. Today in God Calling, it says, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. Hey, that sounds pretty simple. If any man hear my voice and open the door, I will come in to him and will sup with him and he with me. Now, wait a minute. That sounds a little strange. Kind of sounds like kind of sounds like a dinner invitation or something, you know, that maybe, maybe you're looking for a free meal. <laughs> That's kind of trippy. I mean, I can't imagine that, you know, God eating a free meal. I mean, stand at the door and knock. But then the interesting thing is that it says that if anyone hears his voice, because wait a minute, he's knocking at the door, so it sounds like there's that word sound again. Hmm kind of sounds like he's knocking and then he must be doing something else in order to hear his voice. Like maybe he's calling? Hmm. Maybe you should read it for yourself and kind of figure out what you think. According to this, it's in Revelation 3.20 and kind of an interesting statement that it's written not to people who don't know God. Hmm. It's not written to people who say they hear his voice. It's written to Christians. You mean Christians need to hear his voice? Well, I don't know if they need to hear his voice, but it says that he's standing on the outside and he's knocking. Hmm. That's odd. <laughs> Why would he be on the outside knocking, trying to get on the inside? He might be working on you. You might want to read that and think about it. See, my children, the knocking rests upon no merit of yours, though it is a response to the longing of your heart for me. Keep that listening ear, as it says, if any man hear my voice. Again, 
that doesn't have to do with how good you are or how bad you are. It's of no merit of your own. Only the ear that's listening carefully will hear me above the other noises. My tones, tones, does he have a cell phone? <laughs> my tones and my voice, my way of knocking, my gentle, quiet, still, small voice. Then listen, if any man hear my voice and open the door, I will come in to him and will sup with him and he with me. Wow, what a feast. You'd think it would have been joy to have been present at the marriage feast of Cana in Galilee when Jesus, you know, one of his first miracles was, hey, let's turn the water into wine. Man, sign me up. <laughs> that must have been something. Here they are, you know, they're they're having a wedding, you know, and I don't know if you've been to a wedding, a Jewish wedding, or you've been to a country wedding like this one was, but man, you definitely at the reception have <laughs> a lot of wine. <laughs> and there are people that like to argue, well, did they know how to make wine in those days? Of course they did. <laughs> Come on. They're Jewish. <laughs> what do you expect? Yeah, I know, I know, I know. <laughs> but, you know, what a wonder it must have been when God provides the wine, when God provides the company, when God meets you where you are, the way you are, and then he speaks to you. And what a difference there is in that type of environment as opposed to what you think a Christian is. Sometimes people get that confused. You know, they think, you know, a Christian's got to be somebody that's, you know, the goody two shoes and he's always got to be like, Grim and proper, you know, and can't let their hair down, you know. And by golly, those Christians, they don't know how to have fun. <laughs> well, maybe that's true for some. I know that's a religious way of expressing your faith to God. That might be one way that you show how much you care about yourself, because, you know, there are some things that it's lawful for you to do, but it may not be beneficial to you in the long run. But not all Christians are the same, you know. My wife and I, you know, we, we love to go out dancing, you know. We we have a blast, you know, because personally, I'm a dancer and I enjoy it, you know. I, I have a fun laughter and zeal for life that when I was in the March for Jesus, I danced in front of the parade, you know, and we had ten dancers all choreographed together and it was wonderful, but also I've gone dancing to casinos where it's all lit up and there's just a crowd standing around watching the band and I think, well, that's kind of a bummer, you know? Don't you like to dance? And so me and my wife get out and we dance and people start laughing and clapping and enjoying themselves, you know? And Jesus was that way at the marriage in Cana. It wasn't as though he said, oh, well, you know, sorry, you guys suffer, you know, you're out of wine. Hey, we'll, we'll dig out the water, you know, and make ourselves at home. But rather... Jesus knew that it was a time of celebration and he took over literally the moment and met them where they were at and provided the wine for a celebration unto the marriage. I think sometimes people would understand a lot more if you let your hair down and admit what you're struggling with as well as what you enjoy doing and then involve God in it as opposed to denying that you enjoy it and keeping God from it because you see once you bring God into the equation then you find out it's not so bad after all and it just might be he's talking to you about something you're doing that he wants to be involved in he might enjoy it but only you and he will know that there might be some things you might not want to do because it might not be the best thing for you now, is it? I can't say. But I can tell you this. If Jesus was standing outside the door knocking and working on the people that are inside the church, what do you think he's doing with the people that are outside the church? He just might be talking to them too. And he just might be doing something special that most people don't think Jesus should be doing. Like spending time with them like 
meeting them where they're at, like the woman at the well. Oh my gosh, she was one of those women at that time of day? What's Jesus doing there? And that's what his disciples asked him. You know, what are you doing? You shouldn't be talking to her. <laughs> really? You may find that sometimes as you listen to God speak, as you let Jesus lead you in your life, you might be going to places and doing things you never thought you might do. Just because you're there to meet someone you never thought you might meet. And I think when it's all said and done and it gets all quiet and still and all the distractions are removed, you know what Jesus wants you to do. You can hear his voice just as easy as I can. As a matter of fact, I think I hear him knocking at the door. Is he calling your name today? He might have something for you to do, and he might have something for you to say.